You sound stressed. Did you be in a great mood? Why are you why? in a bad mood? Why? You're why flying I... home to see your family tonight. You're going to go on vacation. Oh, yeah. Why are you in a bad mood? I'm in a bad mood. Just got a lot going on. Oh, you know? super important. I got it. No, I definitely didn't say that. Important people don't have anything going on. They just have somebody else do it all for them. Well, I can't wait to see Jay Cornegay tomorrow. Let him know that. What? What does that mean? I don't know. I just was trying Jay. to think of an important person more important than you. And Jay that was the person that to my mind. Jay is not the one sending me all this stuff. So I don't he, know He's I not the one sending you pointless emails for meetings? I didn't say they were pointless. This could I have been an email were... instead of a meeting? Um, no comment. So what? Uh, what's going on with you? You're back. You're happy again because... Because uh, of Tuesday is that, I'm going. Is that... I'm going to Vegas tomorrow. You hate Vegas. I do hate Vegas. Uh, I have to go to a wedding on Monday, so I was like, "Well, if I have to go to this wedding, I'm going to back front load it." I guess I should say with mm -hmm. a trip to Vegas, go hang out at the Superbook on Saturday and Sunday, watch some games. I'm cool. doing this reality TV thing for Survivor, which is absolutely pointless at this point in time, but apparently it's still part of my duties to explain to them why we took the Saints and lost. And yeah, uh, yeah that's all I got. So and then I got to go to this wedding and it should be really fun. And then I got to fly home and got lots of shit to do. Does it make you feel better that they fired their coach after the game? And it was the coaching staff's fault. They lost. I don't know. Like I you really... thought it was a consolation prize. Like, is this my, like, yeah. here you go. I hope you're happy. Cause I feel like you never actually watched the games. Like the rest of us were always watching, but you were always headed to something. Oh, you be know, you're... quiet. Yeah. Let me read no. to you. Okay. Th this was this was crazy and i think i sent this to you oh, this, somebody tagged me in this so dennis allen i tweeted oh great this is my consolation prize saints outgained the panthers by 150 plus yards ran for 150 yards plus and won the turnover battle in the last yeah. 20 years teams had gone 275 and zero with that formula they're now 275 and one pretty tough when you you've got a fourth and four at midfield and you're down by one point and there's like a minute left in the game. And the play call is let's throw a fade 35 yards down the sideline and just hope our guy catches the ball. That was the play call. You know, I, I'm not, I wasn't even that mad. I just left the group chat. Cause I like, didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to hear it. I mm -hmm. just wanted to not care. And I was like, okay, the Bengals were the easy, obvious pick. We didn't trust mm -hmm. them. My, one, my one, a pick was the Vikings. My one B pick was the saints. So I was like, all right, like maybe the Colts will win tonight. And then I'll just be like, well, did, it wasn't in the cards. Yeah. And that didn't happen either. So then I was like, all right, Monday night, maybe the Bucks will lose and like 11 people lose with Kansas City. And that'll make me happy. And then that didn't happen either. <laughs> well, we did. We did stay alive in the Splash Sports. Arena yes. So let's talk we are still alive in Splash. That's not a small achievement to still be alive in week 10. And I think. We did talk about using the Vikings last week against Indianapolis. We are is it is it safe to say we're leaning towards using them in Splash I, this I think, week? They're at Jacksonville. So in Splash, there's a, I believe 144 left. Okay. I meant to pull that up before. Um, and there are two more weeks where you just pick one and then it goes into the double picks. Okay. So we've been doing things a lot differently this year. In regards to when we're using teams, we've used a few really good teams, Baltimore, Detroit, Buffalo, but we've used mm -hmm. some like other teams like the Jets, the Bears, the Broncos, the Chargers, the Rams. So I feel like we've done a really good job. And I sent you the list earlier and then you just left <sighs> me on red. We, um, use the, we use the Rams? Yeah, we use the Rams week seven. Was that when they played the Raiders? I believe so. Okay. I, I vaguely remember that. Okay. Yeah, they were seven well, point favorites to the Raiders. It's kind of funny though. I know we used, I know we used the Bears and we used the Redskins and we used the Chargers and we thought like we were kind of getting them out of the way. And now we kind of wish we had the Bears and the Chargers. This week the Bears are at home against the Patriots. The Chargers are at home against the Titans. We thought we were saving other teams. I wouldn't mind having the Chargers this week. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, use. The, I'm still alive. There's, uh, we did a partial chop of the one local one I I've been in for the last five or six years. We did a partial chop. Local means illegal. No, it doesn't. It means oh, okay. that it's like a buddy of mine that's been doing oh. it for a long time, and a bunch of people around where I'm from, 
put in money okay. and yeah. Listen, I don't know what he does that with it. Unique. I don't know if he takes a rake. That's not my business. Okay. All I know is I've been doing it legally on my end for a very long time. Okay. And he said, okay, here's, there's three of you guys left. We agreed to a chop. So we each got a nice chunk of change there. And then uh, this week, last week, it was kind of interesting. So I thought it was weird and how this kind of went down because mm-hmm. I took Baltimore last week. The other guy took Baltimore that I know, and then the guy that we don't know took Cincinnati. Okay. Other than that, the only zig zigzag we've all had the same picks every single week. I took Kansas City week five. My buddy took Green Bay, and this guy took Chicago. So hmm. by all means, my entry's worth the least. So I can't go Kansas City there this week. So I think I am going to go Chargers. I think that makes the most sense. I can yeah. see – Maybe them going KC, and then maybe, maybe the Broncos can win that game. Maybe. Chargers at plus eight. There was some sharp money on the Chargers. Or, I'm sorry, Chargers. On the Titans against the Chargers. I I, I can tell you that. And then we talked about the Bears at plus seven. There was some sharp money on the Patriots against the Bears. Kelly and I talked about using the Vikings for our joint entry there was sharp money on Jacksonville at the start of the week, but obviously that was before they knew the extent of Trevor Lawrence's situation. So you can throw that bet out the window, right? I mean, now as the Lawrence news broke later in the week, the money's obviously come in on the Vikings. And now the Vikings have been pushed up five and a half all the way to Minnesota minus seven right now with a money line of minus three forty. Okay. So, and then, is that the uh, highest money line you guys have at the Superbook? I think Denver's got to be the – Denver was the highest of the week, right? Okay. I'm sorry, I, Kansas City. Can, Kansas I City, keep, what do you guys think? Reading the, eight? I keep reading the teams backwards, so obviously I've lost it. Kansas City is minus 400 against Denver. Okay. But that number's come down a lot. Denver yeah, has. plus 9.5 was, was a pretty sharp side. And it, it's a bit of a sandwich spot for – for the Chiefs, if you believe in that sort of thing, I do. They had a they had a Monday night game. They could have lost if Tampa Bay had gone for two. I can't believe they didn't go for two. That was a terrible decision. They didn't. Yeah. Obviously. Okay, I want to go back to that really quick. So wait a minute. Here's the reality. You know what happens of when course. you're in Arrowhead and the Chiefs win the coin toss? Yeah. Obviously. So you'd rather not go for two. And you'd rather take the 50-50 proposition that you might win the coin toss? I, I don't get it. Well, no, let's just take our chances against Mahomes in overtime. That's a good idea. No, as soon as they as soon as they kicked the extra point and they lost the coin toss, the game was over. And, of course, Kansas City won the game. I don't know what they were thinking there. But what I was saying is I, I do think it's a bit of a sandwich spot for the Chiefs because they have Buffalo on deck. And they've got the short week after the long game. And it's important to remember with the, with the Chiefs, they are three-time Super Bowl champions. They don't care at all about these regular season games. All they want to do is win. They just want to win and not get anybody hurt and get to yes. January. That's it. They don't care about blowing out Denver, blowing out Tampa Bay on Monday night. They just want to keep everything vanilla. They're experimenting with some plays. They're saving the good stuff for the postseason, and they're trying to get their team back healthy to make a run for another Super Bowl. And so that that's why you see the line come down a lot on the Broncos. Well, there's that, but I also think there's a better spot to use Kansas City. At Carolina, they'll be like 16-point favorites. At home to the Raiders, they're going to be almost two touchdown favorites. So mm-hmm. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people are going to want to use Kansas City this week. I think in Splash, we need to save them for one of those other weeks because we have to have Double picks coming up, yeah, and that's true. gonna get real spicy. No, I don't want to use Kansas City and Splash. When you you mentioned it, but we used we did a good job saving teams all along, but then we used Detroit against Tennessee, then we used Baltimore against Denver. Can't complain about that. They were both just blowout wins. The one yeah, and I needed third. that. I needed like yeah. not want to like jump off my roof kinds of Pins and needle survivor. How many floors is your house? So wouldn't jumping off your roof just result in like a broken leg or something? Just break my legs. Yeah, well, that's a great idea. So there's, now you're out of survivor and you're laying there on the ground with a broken bone. That's your plan. That's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Don't jump off your, your house. 
Another team, Kelly would never do this one, and I don't blame her. It, the Eagles are actually a seven point. Not it's after just, last weekend. No, it's just funny to see the Eagles as a touchdown favorite in Dallas. It says a lot about where Dallas is. I know that's mostly because Dak Prescott is hurt. I get that. But it, it says a lot about where the Cowboys are. Because I'll be honest, I don't really think Dak Prescott's that good. I I gave out – I said this was an overreaction. I think Cooper Rush is maybe a point and a half, two points worse than Dak. He's been on that team for four years. He can run that offense. I think that's a massive yeah. overreaction to the number. I'm not saying yeah. Dallas is going to win that game. But, no, I did a show with CT this morning, and I was like – so anyway, back, back to those rules that I have. Yeah, I might be able to take a road team. I might be able to take a divisional team, but I don't think I can ever do that again. I think I have to have like a hard and fast. I just I don't mind taking the road teams because I don't I don't believe that home field advantage is worth as much in the NFL as it I used agree. to be. And Carolina, I know they just beat New Orleans. They should have never won that game. Uh, New Orleans settled for field goals. They botched the end of the first half. They botched the end of the game. They gave up a, a third and long play and then a touchdown in the fourth quarter. There was like 85,000 yeah. holding there's, calls. There's no way. that the, There's no way. But that's what makes this so hard. That's what makes Survivor so difficult is, yeah, obviously New Orleans should have never lost that game, but they did. And that's why this is such a tricky contest. But I don't think it's because it was a road game. I don't I don't really believe in that. You stuff. don't think it's because it was on a, on the road in the division? Division, maybe. I, I can see. I can see. That's what I mean. I, I can but take like, a road team. I can take a that, divisional team. But I don't think I want to ever take a divisional road team again. I think I'm going like, to stick. Do you, do you think Jacksonville is going to have any kind of a home field advantage against Minnesota on Sunday? No. I, I don't. I don't believe Which so. Which is why I'm okay with taking Minnesota. But if it yeah. was, I don't Minnesota know. Minnesota at the Bears or something. Yeah. Like I would not want to be taking okay. Minnesota. That's fine. That's I get. I, I do get where you're coming from with that. Um, I, I guess I understand that. Just but, because those games seem to matter so much more. So you don't want to take Atlanta minus three and a half at New Orleans. That's what you're saying. No. And I actually think New Orleans is going to fuck around and win that game. And then I'm going to be really mad. Why don't we talk about. Anything already, other than Survivor? Yes. We've already complained about last week enough, right? I mean, the. I should have football, no complaints. I should just be complaint free. I'm sorry. College football, your team lost on Saturday. Yeah. Lost yeah, Saturday. that was awesome. Let me tell you. Tell me. Go ahead. No, I don't want to talk about it. Like, what in the actual fuck? Every this year it happens. Double digit favorites. I got into it. They said that I was a fair weather fan. And I said, yeah, here's the reality. You don't I wanna, lose I games like that. I want to talk to you about that. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk, go, to me about, no. talk to me about it. Well, I, I made fun of you on Saturday. I know that's hard to believe. But every time Kansas State loses, like what's Kansas State's record right now? Like seven and two. Okay. But, you you know, every time they lose, you are you want to fire the coach and fire the No, I don't want to fire Chris Lyman. But I never want – no, no, no. I never wanted the offensive line coach promoted. That's what I didn't want. Kansas you do State. not go out and find somebody better than who just left or who you just fired. We deserve better. K-State has fucking money. We're paying college kids millions of dollars to play a sport. You can go find me a fucking offensive coordinator. But not Kansas hire State is not – Your guys are not Texas. You're not – Ohio State, you're not Georgia. I didn't say we are, but Bing, we're not losing our coaches 72? to people like that either. What's our offensive with... coordinator that I didn't really want to keep anyway went to AM and he's doing marginal at best. I don't give a shit. But if you I... look at you cannot hire from within. And I begged them not to do that. I said it back in December. Please do not hire from within. Then they go out and they get Matt Wells and they hire him as like some hybrid OC position, yet he's not calling the plays. We look like 1994 vanilla Bill Snyder, and I'm not okay with that. Iowa State is a three-point favorite. On, well, that's at Kansas. Who, who yes. do you guys play? We're on a fucking bye week. Oh, I thought you guys. I thought you guys had a big game this week. Oh, I no. totally spaced that. You guys, are, you're on a bye week, and you're still this pissed off. I thought you guys had. For some reason, I thought Kansas State had like a big game this weekend. I just totally spaced it. 
No. Like they had a sandwich spot. Like <laughs> yeah. they, they just let down at Houston. No, they fucking had a bye week. That's what makes it even worse. Wow. You lose as a 13 point favorite going into a bye week. That is bad. Uh, West Virginia is at Cincinnati. That game is early on Saturday morning. I, I don't know where, where I, I sit with this West Virginia team right now. Kelly. You guys just fired your I, offensive coordinator, right? Yeah. But that, that's such a scapegoat move, you know, yeah, of course for, it is. Uh, for the head coach. The big games this week, for some reason I got my Big 12 dates messed up. But the big games this week are, stop me if you've heard this before, in the SEC. Georgia is minus two and a half at Ole Miss, and Alabama is minus three at LSU. So two pretty good games in the SEC. I'm going to give you a few sharp plays for Saturday. Navy minus three at South Florida. Central Florida plus three at Arizona State. Michigan plus 15 at Indiana. Boy, we'd like to see Michigan win that game. God, like, and I, some smartass asked me, oh, you're going to bet against Indiana this week? I go, it's a lot of points. How can anybody bet against Indiana at this point? I mean, they, they just ah. kick everybody's ass every week. Why, why don't you bet against the Detroit Lions, too, while you're at it? I did. I bet against and both of them last week. Air Thank Force you. plus 10.5 against Fresno State. I think the funniest line of, of the week is uh, Saturday night in South Bend. Notre Dame is a 26-point favorite at home against Florida State. When I We made that bet on Notre Dame to make the playoff before the season, and the thinking was the tough games were at A&M, obviously, home for Florida State and at USC. They somehow lost to Northern Illinois, <laughs> which is just so ridiculous, but they're still a big favorite to make the playoff. They just have to win out. They crushed Navy two weeks ago. And all they got to do is just close the deal and all these games are going to be a big favorite. It's so funny that it's even come to this. If they don't lose as a 6,000 money line favorite, then it's not even close. It's not even a question. Yeah. I, uh, I almost lost uh, our splash last weekend. My, I had, uh, I have one, two, three, four entries left. Okay. In our Survivor Challenge, one, and we had the smaller one for $20, the $100 one, mm -hmm. the $20 one, I had five entries. And then the Revival, I had two entries. So I have four left. I used Mich uh, Mississippi State on all four because I was like, well, I'm never going to use this team again. And they were losing to UMass. Well, so, okay, let's talk about that. Because me and Louis D'Onofrio, we have a, a tandem entry and we used the same, we used Mississippi State. They were losing like in the first quarter and they ended up winning by like 30 points. Like, don't you think you guys overreacted a little bit? I mean, it's like they were down in the second half. Listen, I also at that time had Arkansas. They were getting blown okay. out. They got blown out. K-State was looking just completely yeah. abysmal. I mean, true. it was just not a good day. And I was like, fuck it. I hope I just lose everything now. Just take <laughs> me out. I don't even oh, want yeah. to do it anymore. Like, I actually wanted to say that about the v contest. Someone just said that I was on the chopping block. I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't submit for a week. So, of course, I'm on the chopping block. And last week was not very good. How does and that contest work? If you, if, you, if you don't submit, you get a zero, obviously. Yeah. So, I got a zero. And, on the week that still, I – You're still on the week, though? Yeah. On the week that That's I went good. five, one, and one, I got a zero. Uh, last week was not good. I think I was like two and – I got to look. I think it was two and – Five. It was awful. What What did awful. Matt Human say about you not submitting? Because you know, oh, he, he was all pissed off at me, yeah. and I'm like, well, you could have sent yeah. me a text. I was at Morgan Wallen. Matt like, is Matt's been very critical of this program, so yeah. that doesn't surprise me that he would be he would be critical of you not. Listen, not I have an alarm this. set. Okay, every single Friday. Yeah. And I'm driving in stop and go traffic. To go to Morgan Wallen for bumper to bumper traffic for two and a half hours. So, of course, I get there. We get on the party bus and I forgot because I wasn't going to do it while I was driving. So why didn't you just I mean, it's a good story. Why didn't you just do it like earlier in the week? You couldn't. It only it opens at three oh. Eastern. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, OK, good answer. No, literally, that's why I had my alarm was going off while I was driving. I was like, okay, I need to do this as soon as I park. And then imagine sitting in Tropical Traffic, you just want to beat your brains out and have a high yeah. noon. And so that's basically <laughs> what happened. Like, I, I literally parked. Sam goes, here you go. And I 
next thing I know, my phone is blowing up in the middle of Morgan Wall and people tell me yeah. how fucking stupid I am. And why didn't I hire a proxy service? I'm like, that's not how that works. Why don't you have a, like you, you're in so many contests. Why don't you have an assistant to kind of arrange everything for you? Because I'm an adult and I can just log in and look at all of it. I have it all, okay. but I just wasn't in front of my computer that specific Friday. Like tomorrow, need like a, I'm going to land in Vegas. You need like my a alarm's going to go manager. off and I'm going to immediately put in my VEASAN picks. All right. Well, Dick, tell me about, we don't have the chuckle ham play anymore. That sucks. But I know. Give me the, I like, I like that bit. Give I know. It was really fun. Those guys are great. And we're going to do some stuff during March Madness as well. Yeah. It'll be great. Uh, but what, if I did juice? have the chuckle ram, rum ham, the chuckle ham. Yeah, it would be Air Force because that is really funny. Air that Force? I like Air Force this week. That's it's disgustingly really, funny. That's a sharp side that we've seen here. What about the hottie threesome? Tell us about that. So I liked Georgia Tech better to get the outright win. There was a few double-digit underdogs that I liked. Uh, Oklahoma State, MTSU, Air Force, Middle and East. Georgia Tech. And ultimately, I decided the only one I thought could actually win the game outright was going to be Georgia Tech. So, okay. so it's a hottie one. So no, and then I also uh, have Virginia and North Texas, and North Texas has come down a lot. So, not exactly right. the most ideal there, but it is what Virginia, it is. Filmed. Virginia at Pitt, you know, Pitt got humbled a little bit. You know, they were having a. I, I make so many Pat and Arduzzi jokes, I almost lose track of them at times. But they Pitt's had an exceptional season. Yeah, of course. And they really got humbled on on Saturday night at SMU. They got doors blown off by the Mustangs. Yeah, you kind of have to wonder how they bounce back there, right? And we'll see. Virginia, Pitt, Saturday night. That'll be an interesting game, I think. There's not a, this isn't a great college football card, I don't think. Or am I just – have I just lost all interest in football because of – No, I would agree with you. I mean, listen, okay. it's uh, it's like – back one third of the season has just started right like i think back we're gonna get some good action for some bowl games with the college football playoff i think that's gonna mm. spice things up a little bit yeah. and you know weeks 15 16 17 and 18 are gonna suck in the nfl but again we'll have bowl games and we'll have you know some different contests and stuff we're doing with splash and then we're gonna get in the nfl playoffs and then it's over and then we got basketball i would have voted for a candidate who who promise to shorten the NFL season. It's so long. Like that, that would have spoke to me. 18 would weeks. It? So, that's so long. Oh my gosh. You know, NFL, I'll give you a couple. Don't really, you know, last Thursday we mentioned that the Jets were a pretty sharp play. Okay. And they did beat Houston for us. But, you know, you go back and watch that game again. They were losing the game because the idiot fumbled the ball at the end zone. And if it wasn't for an outrageous catch by Garrett Wilson for a touchdown that gave the Jets the lead, I don't know who wins that game. So that, that's how fine – I think that was on third and long, too. And he made that catch to, t to give them the lead. A little bit lucky there. Don't have anything sharp to report on the game tonight. Bengals, Ravens, the Bengals are plus six. The Bengals tend to play up to their – competition right they probably should have beat kansas city and baltimore this season they probably and then they played down they use i think everybody likes the over i kind of understand why they like the over neither one of these defenses is that great which makes me mm -hmm. go straight contrarian and say i like the under uh we'll see i i played a little splash quick picks i did uh lamar over passing yards let me see what else i did i did lamar over passing yards I okay. did uh, Zay Flowers over receiving yards and then Jamar Chase under 82 and a half receiving mm -hmm. yards. I thought that was a little, just a smidge too high. A smidge. A smidge. So we talked about a couple of sharp plays on Sunday. Denver plus nine and a half. I already mentioned that one. The Jets, every week, the Jets, right? They're like, they're like the old, remember when the Browns were the sharp pick every week? That was a fun time. The, the Browns had huge God, that Jackson. was like, oh, it was yeah. just. Deshaun I didn't understand Kaiser. that whatsoever. Like every I, week, every week, every week. Cause I know, cause I was like submitting for proxy picks and every single week there was like 40 guys that would just put the Browns in there. No matter how many points. Every week. And then there was now the other guys that were considered square and they would just have the Patriots in every single week. 
and guess which team covered every time. Yeah, every single the, week the Patriots <laughs> was a gimme. It was like a free bingo spot. Oh, yeah, for a long time. Jets, uh, the, the favorites flipped in this game, though. The Jets were plus one. Now they're minus one and a half. They're at Arizona. Arizona, all of a sudden, is, is looking pretty frisky. You know, they got – they come back late. They beat Miami two weeks ago. They blow out the Bears last Sunday. That We talked about that game. We talked about what a bad schedule spot that was for the Bears. After the Hail Mary loss, they had to go on the road at Arizona. It was a really bad spot for them. It showed they got blown out by the Cardinals. And all of a sudden, the Cardinals are in first place in the NFC West. They're five and four. That's They're so in crazy. First place, but the Sharp guys are on the Jets. Sunday night, if you want to get in front of this one, all the more power to you. They took uh, they took Houston plus three and a half at home against Detroit. I don't know if I can get there. I love I like I like CJ Stroud a lot, but he hasn't really looked that good this season. Six and zero against the spread as a home underdog. Both their receivers are hurt. Yeah, but when he was putting those numbers up, they were probably more than a three three and a half point favorite against the best team in the league. It looks really fishy. I'll say that. So the the Lions. We think the Lions are the best team in the NFL right now. We think that if the Super Bowl was played this week, that the Lions would be favored against the Chiefs if that was the matchup. We think, the Lions, are, we think the Lions are the best team in the league. The Lions are playing awesome. What? One and a half? Two? Yeah, what are we we, talking? We were, our room was split two, two and a half, somewhere in that area. We think the Lions are the best team in the league. Now, a lot can change between now and February. Of course. And we had the 49ers favored against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl last year. That didn't work out for us either. So I'm just saying. You love to bring up like shit like that. To just remind me. Sorry about that. Uh, that's a cool game though. I just, sometimes I feel like, like I understand the sharp guys are in Houston. I get it. But I just feel like sometimes there's a lot of games to choose from. It's like, you, this is where you want to go with your money. You want to go against the Lions and you want to back this Houston team with all these injuries isn't there somewhere else you'd rather put your, your money? I don't know. Monday night game, really sharp bet on the Dolphins plus two and a half. That's moved that line down to plus one. They're at the Rams. One of the few times I feel like I can't make my joke about the Rams not having home field advantage. Because I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of Dolphins fans. Uh, I can see that. That's the so Dolphins are a really- pretty popular 90s team. I was surprised. You know what? I say that. And I, I got to admit, I went to Dolphins Raiders a couple years ago at Allegiant, and I was really impressed by how many Miami fans were there. Yeah, I so would maybe- say like that people that are my age, they're fans of all of the good teams, right? So it's like, think about it. And when we were growing up, everybody was Cowboys fans. Yes. Everybody was Dolphins fans because of Dan Marino. That's why I'm mm-hmm. a Broncos fan. I, I really do think that there's a couple. I mean, there's no people that are Raiders fans for oh, some god awful well, reason. When we were kids, it was Dallas. Yeah. Dallas had Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, the offensive line. What is the what is so you don't have well yeah, you do have a barking dog. What's your barking dog? What's your best bet? Uh my barking dog in the NFL is Denver. You mentioned the like scheduling that. spot like for that. the Chiefs, yeah. divisional on the road. I know everybody's like, oh, well, last year they Finally beat him in Denver. Kansas City's gonna be looking for revenge. I'm like, Kansas City does not care about the Kansas Denver City, Broncos team. Kansas City doesn't care about stuff like that. I, K- I, I've said Kansas, it all week. Kansas City has way bigger fish to fry. Than- but I will say, if you like that scheduling spot for the Broncos against the Chiefs, it's the exact same as the Bills versus the Colts. Okay, yeah, we, so we didn't talk about that game. That, that's a good call out. The Bills, they got. You know, what's their biggest game of the year? The big, so the Bills, the two biggest games of the season are the regular season game where they always beat Kansas City and the postseason game where they, they always, always lose to Kansas City. Yes. So they've got – they're at Indianapolis this week. Obviously, everyone's going to write off Indianapolis after last Sunday night when they they move up to I just to wanted them to win so I felt better. That's all I, I needed it. from them, and they I just couldn't it. even give me that. They they looked awful in that game, and they although their defense did play hard, they but they in the first half they scored zero points. No, oh, a, wasn't it seven their, seven at halftime? Their, their offense scored zero points. Oh no, their but offense. that's my point. Is it was and tie that, game and that play? Even though I was rooting for the Colts, I mean, basically the defensive tackle clubbed Darnold in the head with his arm. It was absolutely and I and I make fun of the refs as much that's as anybody. Fair. 
that was definitely a foul. I was rooting for the Colts, but of course that was a foul. And they they threw a flag, and then they picked it. They up. picked it up. I know. I'll t- hey, listen, I will take I wanna... it. Okay? okay, I'll take it. Best bet. Uh, it's the Cowboys. I told you. Yeah. I'm just like I. I'm just being straight up. This is too many points. This is how not a big you, enough drop off. From but how do you differentiate between your barking dog and your best bet when your 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 best bet's a seven point dog? I don't. Th- I don't think Dallas is going to win the game outright. I think Dallas so, is going to cover the seven. I think seven is too many points. I don't think they're going to win. That's like I don't understand in the NFL your league. You've got like NFL MVP, which is always an offensive player every year, right? But then they also have an award, offensive player of the year. Well, isn't that guy the offensive player of the year? Well, oh, yeah, I, probably. I don't probably. Well, every, That's year, they, every year it's, it's a quarterback, right? And then the most recent non-quarterback was Adrian Peterson. He's a running back. He plays offense. So wasn't he then the offensive player of the year? I don't understand that award. Just don't get I don't get it. I feel like the Cowboys are your barking dog and your best bet. No. I think the Broncos actually can beat the Chiefs. I don't think the Cowboys are going to beat the Eagles. Do you want to talk about Liverpool being in first place in the Premier League? No, that... I want to go to the mailbag because I still have to pack for Vegas. Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. We're first place uh, in the Premier League. Come on. All right. Are you done? Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's all I care about. I feel like you really want to talk about them. No, just being in first place in the Premier League. No big deal. No big okay. deal. Vince in PGH on X wants to know, did any moves at the NFL trade deadline have an impact on the futures markets or power ratings? I don't think so. I liked what the, I liked what the Redskins did. They made a trade for Marshawn and Lattimore. It's, it's amazing what having a, a real front office can do to an NFL team. Like the, just within one year, they've got, they have a quarterback. They have, you're like good, so excited. I could care less, but did they you have a, they have, a, they have like a real coaching staff. They've got a QB. They've got all this cap room for next year. And it took them one year to do this stuff. Did you so see what, the the Twitter rant I sent in the group today? You might have been too busy. And it's like a sister like going off about her brother. And she's like, mm-hmm. I'm not talking to anybody at Thanksgiving. Fuck you. Because he did a write-in <laughs> candidate of a player. Yeah. And the guy, the next comment's like, well, we got to know which player. And she's like, some guy named Jaden Daniels. <laughs> and I so he was died. Uh, he was the write-in vote for for president. Is that what this, the joke is? Brother, she's like so wow. mad at her brother for writing. For, I can't remember. Well, did anybody? I mean, my buddy horse wrote in Ben Hunt because he lives did in I... Massachusetts, so it doesn't matter. So he's like, he wrote in our friend Uncle Ben from Canada. He sent me a picture. Nobody wrote in me. None of your 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 people. So actually, Danny, who lives in New Jersey, I said New Jersey. Okay. So one of the be- one of the political bets I made was Jersey under fourteen and a half percent, and it was like just shy of like five percent. So I, but I text him, and he was like, he's like, I'm gonna write in John Murray, and I go, the fuck you are. Hey, <laughs> you know, what the hell, know, man? Like a real American, you're not writing in John Murray. If you, you can't tell somebody DC, else what to vote for. Listen, hey. if you live in D.C., if you live in yeah. Massachusetts. Fine, but like real states that things matter, you're not allowed to do that. So that's why that chick's pissed off at her brother. No. And that's why I wouldn't let anybody write in for you. Danny, you gotta vote for who you want to vote for. Your vote is your business. You can't you can't be one of these manipulative people pressuring others what and what to vote for. That's bullshit. Well, I man. pressured a lot of people to go get registered and to go vote. So I, you're welcome. Well, oh yeah. Thank My you. My sister sure calls me. That you're gonna love this. My sister calls me yesterday and I'm like, okay. hey, I can't answer. I'm filming all day, whatever. And she was like, How much money did you lose? And I said, What do you mean? I had a really good, I was like, I lost Virginia. I lost New Hampshire. Why? And she goes, no, you, you said, you said that you had all that she was going to win. And I go, yeah, but I I had a lot of bets on the other side. What are you talking about? And she goes, you told me when you saw me in August and I go, yeah, that's because you guys weren't going to vote. So I told you I thought you were going to win so that you and all of your family would get pissed off and go out and vote instead of opting out. And she goes, fuck you. That's what she texted me back. So, I yeah. just feel like you're. I mean, I'm not like the guy in Pennsylvania registering like 400,000 Amish people, but like, yeah. I feel like I did my part locally in my like stratosphere. I feel like you shouldn't be like manipulating what other people vote for. Just let I them, didn't. I just said go and and actually do your civic duty. I think opting okay. out is unacceptable. Okay, 
Fair enough. That's all. Fair enough. Oh, that's so there was a few manipulative tactics I had to use. I didn't tell Danny who to vote for. He just said, I'm going to write in John Murray. And I said, no, the fuck you're not. You know, Danny, I would have really still wrote in John Murray. I wasn't I there with him. appreciated that, Danny. And I'll consider that if I do run for political office in the state of New Jersey in 2026. And Josh, you know 24, 490. What's the liability on the Super Bowl? futures well we, we you know we're liable on kansas city which i wasn't you know i wasn't exactly thrilled with to be honest the beginning of the year we had kansas city at high odds i don't think it's a news flash that people are looking to bet on kansas city is there it's like is so, there like going to be an option you know how certain other sports books do different things is there ever going to be an option at the super book where i can bet no mm -hmm. I would yeah, like to could, bet no this weekend. Can you give we me a do no? That for you. We could do that for you. We could use the money on the no. But why would you? I, why? Do you really want me to tell you why they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year? Is it some weird, like, like, uh, shit. Yeah, I guess. Go ahead. No, I don't, I'm not, even don't worry I don't about it. I'll send, you a, I'll send you a voice note. But like don't a, be, don't worry is about it. Like it. A, a witch doctor or yes. something like that? Oh, yes, geez, they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. That'll well, be fine. Don't be so sure about that because look, I'm very sure. Kansas I want to bet City. the no. You're okay. So can you make sure I know you're going to be gone? I'm coming to the window with yeah. hardcore cash money to bet the no. Kansas City was not the best team in the NFL last season, and they still managed to win in Baltimore. I thought Buffalo was probably better than them. They lose. They they win in Buffalo. They win in Baltimore. Baltimore was definitely better than they were, and then they beat San Francisco, who also was I think better than they were. So are you sure about this? I, this is what you want to do. All right, so the next question, the Phil guy – Philadelphia wants... and Pittsburgh are the other two that we, that we lose on. And Cincinnati. Okay, interesting. That many AFC North teams, huh? Uh, I have a guy asking how my futures bets are doing. Gary, NUFC51. How is Kelly's futures looking? Let me pull some of these up. Uh, I have Texas under 10 wins, not looking great. KU under eight wins, cashed weeks ago. Colorado oh, wow. under five and a half wins, loser. Missouri over nine wins, probably a loser. Bears to miss the playoffs, looking pretty good. Bears under eight and a half wins, plus money, looking pretty good. Packers plus 220 to win the NFC North. Mm. Meh. All right, let's go to the next screen. Probably, uh, you probably needed them. You needed them to beat the Lions at Lambeau. Yep, you, you, I yeah. did. And yeah. that's not going to happen. Old Miss under oh, nine and a half wins. A and M under eight and a half wins, uh, and the rest is just all my plus five dollars on a popular vote that still hasn't cashed yet, and I don't know why. I don't want to know who you bet on in the popular vote. It's none of my business. Oh, you well, said I just told you it was plus five hundred. <laughs> I bet five hundred plus four twenty five plus three dollars plus two dollars. Swing state blue wall. I, any, any and everything that I could just every time I heard. Women my age speak. I just bet more money. Let's go to the next question. Okay. So I, don't, I just don't want to get in trouble. What are you going to get in trouble for? I, can't you get in trouble for saying what you think? Isn't that what America is now? No. I actually have lost almost 300 uh, followers, though, in the past 48 hours because I tweeted an American flag. And I did it. I said on the show this morning. Yeah, that's all I tweeted. I didn't tweet what? any of my election bets. I haven't barely talked about it. I tweeted an American flag Tuesday morning. You know, I got to say, Kelly has been remarkably restrained the last 48 hours. You really, like, I don't really, you didn't really send me that much stuff on Tuesday. And you really, you've been pretty restrained. You haven't really been going nuts. I'm proud of you. Okay. I'm what? just pointing it out. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Comes with age. Uh, okay. Next sure. question. Man, Manth. Three Dan on X says, can you please talk about the rules of the splash for college football survivor contest since we're in the final stretch? There's dummies on this app spreading misinformation. So what, so it wasn't, I mean, I'd actually like to hear this too, because it wasn't what we originally proposed, right? We had originally proposed you pick a team in the first round, the quarterfinals, the semifinal. So essentially the same thing as your KIB March Madness survivor challenge. Where if you got to the final four and you didn't have UConn or Purdue, you were... Well, so here's the thing. We have three different contests and they all three have different rules. So 
The okay. revival is double picks every week, okay. right? Okay. And in that one, there's 110 left out of 500, 499. So okay. that one's obviously had a lot more of a bloodbath because it's double picks. Sure. The first two, the $100 and the $20 entry, I believe should be the exact same. And that is... You just have to that, pick through the regular season and pick one bowl game? So, no. Hold on. So okay. you have to pick... Where is it at? So you have to pick one team per slate in the major conferences, including the Mountain West and AAC. Oh, the conference championship game. And then, right, yes. Right. So weeks one, five, eight, and 14 are double pick weeks. Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. have to pick a conference championship. So you don't have to pick a bowl team? No, there's nothing for the Bulls because so we're going to do something special for the Bulls. So, so oh, that's right. You told me that. So, so, so for so a week lot of people 12, are going to make it to the end. Yes, unfortunately. Well, we didn't I, – I mean, this isn't what we had originally envisioned for the contest. I think we talked about it last week on the show, but I would have never believed that no favorite would ever lose a college football game. I mean, it's – like that – every year there's a few of these teams that go down. I, it's crazy to me that – Yeah, and then no because one NIU's in the MAC, they weren't in that when they did beat Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. It's a, I mean, look, it would have been bad. I mean, there would have been over 100 people last week with Mississippi State going out. I mean, a lot of people use Mississippi State. They were, they were losing in the first quarter. Okay, but I'm just saying if they ended okay. up losing the game. Um, yes. But, yes, so if you guys ever need to know, you just click on your contest, and then you click details, and it will give you all of the rules there. Who are the people spreading misinformation on X? Who Clearly are dickheads. That's not uh, cool. Red Ramos Gaming on X says, as a fellow West Virginia alum, I'm curious to hear mm-hmm. – who John Murray would handicap as his favorite to replace Neil Brown. Ooh. Well, I've talked to some of my buddies in Morgantown, and they seem to think they're going to try to go after Jimbo Fisher. I don't – I guess I don't understand, like, how much money is Jim, Jimbo Fisher making right how now? How much money does Jimbo Fisher need? Yeah, like, like to not – Jimbo Fisher's younger than I thought, though. I looked it up. He's oh, 50, is he? I would have guessed, like, 65. Okay. He's, like, 58 years old. But – I mean, that'd be a good hire for them. Dan Mullen is a name that's Dan been thrown Mullen. around. Oh, do you know no. what? Do you know what famous college football coach was born in Fairmont, West Virginia? No. You might have heard of him. Nick Saban. Nick Saban was born. Really? In I mean, yeah. I knew Nick was a hillbilly, but my God! Oh, what the hell, man? What that's that hilarious. Nick so, Saban. You guys can't afford him. Saban. He's no, making a lot of money being an analyst. I think I don't think they can afford Jimbo Fisher. He's making a lot of money not working for the Texas A&M boosters. So maybe Dan Mullen is a name. I, I look everybody. Everybody liked the Neil Brown hire. He was a hot coach. He was a hot coaching prospect. Didn't work out. It's hard. Kirk Sinetti. Well, I mean, he's the guy everybody's going to want. But is is West Virginia a big enough no. program to get him? Right. Not so, from, he's not going to leave Bloomington. No. He's going to go to like. Michigan. Yeah, that if he's gonna leave, he's gonna go to like Florida. Yeah, but they said today that they're not firing Billy Napier. I don't know why they're gonna well, get blown up by Texas this week. Fine, that he'll go to Florida State. I mean, he'll he's a guy that he's. Got uh, are they him. really gonna get? I don't know if they're gonna fire Mike Norvell. I don't know. I think they should. I was screaming for him to get fired three years ago, but here we are. But why would he leave Indiana unless he was going to one of the premier? You know, Florida, Florida State, these are the biggest programs in college football. That would be the only thing that would make sense for him. I don't know. I'm not saying those are the two biggest programs in college football. Those are the two that come to my mind that are probably looking with, for a new coach. With giant pockets. Yeah. I mean, who else is – Who? what are the other major programs that we are expecting to make a coaching change? I don't know of any off the top of my head. I can't imagine USC is going to get rid of Lincoln. Yeah, Valley. I mean, I don't know. What what happens if Alabama blows out LSU? I mean, it sure seems like Brian Kelly's kind of still in the hot seat. Yeah, Brian Kelly. I, I don't I, I just don't see that. I don't see that. Okay. I saw somebody tweet that Lincoln Riley has been paid a hundred million dollars to ruin two of the biggest college football programs in the country. It's so bad. I wish I had thought of that tweet. That was a good tweet. That it's so right. bad. Danny K731 on X says. Why does the gap in money lines get so much wider the bigger the spread? For example, if you have a one-point favorite, you might see minus 120, plus 100 mm-hmm. on the other side. But then the larger favorite is minus 500, and then the dog is plus 350. 
Is this the guy that almost voted for me to be the president? Yes. Oh, I like this guy. So you're, you're keeping the same hold percentage pretty much, I mean, within reason, as you widen it out, you're keeping the household around the same at minus 110, minus 110, and then it expands all the way out. You try to keep your hold percentage the same. You can't deal minus 2,000 plus 1980. You know, you're just trying to widen it, keep your hold close. It's not going to be exactly the same, but you're going to try to keep it close. Yeah, and you guys don't move money lines sometimes and not just the spreads just because you know that you're going to get a ton of money line action. So you well, may- sometimes we sometimes we will do that on like a game like tonight or a game. Yeah, like, a uh, Sunday night, Monday night Sunday football night. game. Yeah, because everybody's going to want to put X team on the money line in a, pro- yeah, in a no, parlay. Sunday night football is the best example. You're right. So look at, like, look at this game. I mentioned earlier on the show, Houston is a sharp play. That's what we've seen, Houston against Detroit. But think about that matchup. You don't need to go out and bet Houston right now because where do you think the money is going to come in on Sunday? And if all the favorites are winning during the day Sunday, the books are going to need Houston for their lungs at kickoff time. So just keep that in mind on Sunday night. All right. Wise Guy Wager on X says, I'm a UNC fan. What are your opinions on ACC basketball? You have Duke Mm. and UNC highly ranked. Does anybody else see the ACC rising up? I don't know who are the other teams in the ACC this year. I know Duke has Cooper flag. They're loaded. Carolina's got a really good team. I think we've got them at like 25 to one to win it all. Duke, I believe is the favorite at eight to one. I don't know who the third, who are the third and fourth teams in the ACC. I think it's a, it's a, it's a hodgepodge. I, I'm not really sure. I think it's a very clear one and two in the ACC this year. What are your yeah, my are, Miami? Are they gonna be decent again? I mean, they beat K State last yeah. November and then fell off. NC State went deep in the tournament last year. Yes, they did. Uh, where are your where's your head at for college basketball? Who do you like? I haven't even started. Play? I'm so far behind, it's not even funny. And that's I'm going to for on sure. Saturday. Me and my brother Peter are gonna go to the Georgetown game. Ooh. Oh yeah. Georgetown. What's going on with Fairfield. Georgetown this year? That will be okay. I mean, you know, that's like our – that's me and Peter's, like, favorite team in any sport is Georgetown. I get that, but are they going to be any good? Uh, Define good. Yeah. Didn't they get a new coach? They got a new coach last year. They got Cooley from, from – That's Providence, right. They got from Cooley. Person, from Providence. And See, that's they, how far behind I am. Because I just – I love college football. I, I realized trying to work on – and I got ink all over my hand. Uh, mm-hmm. Trying to work on uh, – College basketball, NFL, college football. It, it I, I just got to wait like a couple more weeks. It's a let, tough week. I mean, we, we did. Let them, get we, the, we, let them get the errors out. I mean, like somebody said to me the other night, they're like, oh, do you like K-State tonight? I'm like, no. They're playing a team named New Orleans and laying 30. And I said, if you like K-State, bet them at halftime. That's what I've seen for the last three years. They we, come out slow. They play like shit. And then they turn it up in the second half and they don't cover the big number. I, I'm sure a lot of teams – with high hopes this year, probably do the same. When you play these nothing burger of teams, it's really hard to like get excited and you're learning new offensive schemes. And especially with the transfer portal, you're trying to get all these new players to gel with each other. So it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, Hey, look, I'm going to watch some basketball. I'm going to enjoy it. I might go see Ariel Epstein for the K-State St. John's game. We'll see. Well, Georgetown's got that kid PV that transferred in, I think from TCU last year. So yeah, you've got a, You've got to work the transfer portal, and I think they've got a couple of young freshmen. These are the these are the toughest Saturdays for the guys, like the, the guys, the, the traders, as they call them in Europe, the risk guys. we got to rearrange the schedule a little bit every year at this time because there's a few Saturdays where college football and college basketball overlap. And the number of games, the number of half times, the number of line moves, it's a lot. It, it's a lot back there. Yeah, guys intense. working overtime. Uh, yeah, some of the guys are going to work overtime. Some of them are, are going to do the same nonsense they always do. But some of them will be working overtime. I All I care about is who is filling in for you on Sunday on last call. I cannot believe I have a. Sh- I have to be up at like 5.30 West Coast time. I do not miss those days at all. We'll talk later. 